Archie, I just talked to a new retiree and they said, I don't want any stocks. So what'd you tell them? I said, let's not make any mistakes. Let's check it out. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome to Last Paycheck. We're certified financial planners, Archie Hoxton and Rob Hoxton. Hi. Today, we're going to talk about stocks. And we're really, our, our, our main audience here is going to be for those of you all who don't like stocks, who hear the word stocks and, and, and cringe. You know, maybe you're really conservative investors. You don't like, you don't like risk. And what we're going to talk about today is whether or not you can afford not to own them. Um, so you know, we hear it all the time in practice where you, you meet someone and they're, they want to do financial planning. They want to invest. They want to grow their portfolio for retirement. But they say, I really don't like stocks. I don't want to own them. Um, for a number of reasons, uh, but that's a pretty common objection. That yes, we hear. especially when they when people start getting close to retirement, and it's you know we think of it as, you know, yeah, it's true. You've been running a race during your work life, and and you're approaching the finish line, and you want to go through that, and you want to bust the tape, raise your hands, and scream, you know, whatever at the top of your lungs. I'm retired. Now, I want to not own any any stocks. Well, the thing is, is that, yeah, you're finishing one race, but you're starting another because some of us will live as long or maybe even longer in our retirement years than we did in our work years. So, you know, we've got to make sure that <clears throat> our assets grow and outpace the cost of living. Right. And we know inflation is a real thing because it's come back. We're experiencing it. We have been for the last couple of years now. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, this kind of, comes to the point of, of time horizon. I hear that a lot. Well, I don't have a long time horizon. And I say, well, how long do you want your money to last? Because as your life gets more expensive, the things you want to do, even just the groceries, healthcare, everything is getting more expensive. And you're, if your money isn't, if it doesn't have the juice to keep up with that, you're, you're going to deplete that. Right. And when you retire, so in all of the years, the 31 years that we've been doing this, what, we, what we've seen, and there's a ton of research that would bear this out, what we see is that when people retire, in the first few years, maybe five, six, seven years, their spending actually increases. Because, I mean, let's, let's be true, let's be real here. When you're going to work for 40 hours a week or more, there are a lot of things you'd like to be doing that you haven't been able to do. So you have this sort of pent up demand. And so you're like, well, I want to take this trip or, you know what? I want the new bass boat because I haven't really been able to fish. I've been having to fish off the bank. You spend more money for a while. And it's true that as you get older, your expenses go down, but that happens usually right about the time that your healthcare costs start to increase. Right. So you really need your money to, to grow and outpace inflation. Right. And the stock market has historically been a great, builder of wealth. It has, while there are short periods of time of volatility, um, you know, bear markets and, and, and decreases in value, over the long haul, history has borne out that, that the growth is longer term, it's larger, and, and sometimes it helps to kind of zoom out and, and, and look at the big picture um, That's true. I mean, the fundamentals of what makes stocks increase in value haven't changed. And I know when we get older, I'm older than you, Archie, of course, yeah. uh, being your dad and everything. But <laughs> um, as we get older, we have a tendency to start to see the world as maybe not as as good as it was when we were younger. And I don't know whether that's because things are getting worse or whether our perspective is changing. But the things that drive the increase in stock prices, you know, when you own stock, you own a piece of an American company in most cases, sometimes foreign companies. But the things that drive those values are increased profits. And the things that, in, that drive profits are sales. We have a population that's growing. We have, you know, people are making more money than they used to. They spend more. Companies are more profitable. Stock prices should rise. Wash, rinse, and repeat. That should continue to be the case. And, and that doesn't appear to be changing. It's true. There's all kinds of stuff going on politically. 
But at the end of the day, it's the fundamentals that drive those prices. And you've got to have assets that continue to increase in, in, in value over the years. Right, right. And, and something, a real change happens when you retire. You were talking about perspective changing. Uh, you know, one thing that definitely changes is the fact that, you know, for those of you who retirement means stopping work, well, you don't have control over that income anymore. You, you don't have the ability to say, well, as long as I get up and go to work, I've got a paycheck coming in. And so there's something that changes in, in your perspective about your, your retirement portfolio as well. And we've helped people go through that retirement, cross over that, that finish line and start the next race and, and manage that emotional change that takes place. But it's real and it's important to recognize that. And it's okay. Um, What's not okay is to to let those emotions guide the decisions because that's where people really make big mistakes that that blow up their their financial picture, um, and those mistakes can come from misunderstandings about what stocks are and how they work because they're they're complicated. You throw in the emotional piece and they're really complicated, uh, or in, ingrained beliefs that people have. You know, a lot of people whose parents lived through the Great Depression or grandparents. Oh, yeah. You know, or even my generation who, you know, experienced 2008 when they were children and watched that financial crisis unfold with their parents. Um, or if you personally went through that experience and maybe maybe made a rash decision that cost you a lot of money, you know, those are, those are real, you know, really impactful emotions and beliefs that, that can, yeah. you know... That's, that's, that's a great point, Archie. You know, I, um, in 2008, where, when we had the Great Recession and this massive credit crisis, which could have turned out much worse than it actually did, frankly, um, uh, I, was, I, was still, I was still very fortunate, blessed, in fact, to have um, two grandparents. Both of my grandmothers were still living, and, and I live on a family farm outside of town, and... Um, and my grandmother was living in the old house and I would go and I always would spend lots of time with her. I enjoyed, you know, sort of her perspective. And I remember during 2008 when I was really worried about the economy and the markets and frankly worried about our clients um, losing sleep and just I don't lose weight when I lose sleep and get worried. I actually gain weight when I, <laughs> when I do. So I was gaining weight like crazy. Anyway, I was talking to my grandmother who was a very young child during the depression and and you know it was really interesting to get her perspective and the perspective that her peers had and it's true that those experiences watching your parents go through uh, something like a great depression or maybe the great recession will um create in you uh, a tendency to have a bias uh, toward or away from certain activities and that one of those being uh, owning equity in America's greatest companies. Right. Um, and there's been no greater wealth creator in the history of man. I'm making that up. I don't know if that's actually true, but it seems like it would be true that, I mean, that has been a great way for people to build wealth, preserve it, live on it, pass it on to loved ones and charities. And so if you're listening to this or watching this, have an open mind because you need to have an open mind when it comes to stocks. Yeah. And, and, you know, take steps. I mean, this is, if you're listening, then, then this kind of thing, I mean, take steps to resolve any misunderstandings that you may have and, and learn more because these, these stocks investing, it's, it's a highly complicated world. Um, and, and, and many people who work in it, go and obtain formal education and formal training to be able to provide advice to people on it because it is, it's complicated. But the more that you can learn and, and, and grow to understand how these things work, you know, another common misunderstanding I see with people is they kind of look at their investment account or their retirement account like they do the bank account, right? So you see a number on a screen, right? Say a hundred thousand and, and then a, a month later, you check and it says ninety thousand, but you didn't take any money out. Mm -hmm. If that happened in your bank, you better call your bank and freeze your account because someone's gotten into it, and you've <laughs> been a victim of fraud. But when that 
when it happens in your retirement account, it just means that the investment property that you have, the stocks, the bonds, the mutual funds, you know, another investor just wouldn't pay you as much for them now as they would have last month because of it, it's kind of markets. a popularity contest and yeah. of sorts. Yeah, and it's true that sometimes when we talk to clients, they'll ask, "Well, what's the stock market paying right now?" So that's a that is a, a uh, you know a savings account mentality being applied to an investment decision, right? So right. the stock market isn't paying anything. Right. right. And, you know, companies pay dividends, uh, but those are subject to change. Bank savings and money market funds are paying certain yields or rates, but that's not an appropriate way to refer to stocks. And to be clear, we're talking about stocks as a great way to build your portfolio so that you outpace inflation and you don't have a loss of your standard of living when your paycheck stops. Right. When you've received that last paycheck. We are talking about building a diversified portfolio, a portion of which may need to be stocks. Right. So stocks, bonds, your real estate, a really sizable emergency fund, which is in guaranteed investments, FDIC probably, or treasuries short term. Right. So, But this is a vital component of any well-diversified portfolio that's going to outpace inflation. Right, right. Over time. Absolutely. And, and like we said, there are very few asset classes that you can cheaply diversify with, right? If you want to diversify a real estate portfolio, right, you, you can go out and buy 100 houses or you can go and buy a real estate investment trust. And, and you're, same, fixing, you're fixing the potty in the middle of the night for those tenants. I mean, what a terrible yeah. kind of investment is that? Yeah. And <laughs> so you, it, takes a lot of, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Um, or with the nice thing about with stocks is you can buy a large basket of stocks through an exchange-traded fund or a mutual fund. Uh, and and the, the, there's a lower barrier to entry. Maybe there's a, a, a small minimum or with an exchange-traded fund, you maybe a couple hundred dollars a share. And so – it's an accessible way to, to build wealth, but it's important to, like we said, understand understand what you're owning, understand uh, your own biases, your own, you know, emotional attachment to your to your wealth and your savings, um, and 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 think think about it long term. I mean, it, this is once you retirement isn't the end of the race. You're not going to get to get to retirement and sell all your investments and have a pile of cash because inflation will erode that and you'll spend it down faster and faster every year. Something you said about real estate a minute, a minute ago reminded me I've got, we have some clients that are, their primary investments are real estate. They're really professional, really good at what they do. Okay. So they really know that stuff. And so we're not talking that down, of course, but there is one big difference between your investment account that has stocks and bonds and money market instruments in it and a piece of residential real estate. You can't see the price or the or, you know the price that someone would pay for that real estate every second of the day. Right. Right. Now it's true that some of these apps that are out there um, uh, will give you some idea of what the value of a house might be from one day to the next. But there's a lot of leeway in that in that sort of information. So there there are differences, you know being able to see the price of a stock at any given point during the trading the market day can be stressful. And so that's why you shouldn't spend a lot of time looking at it constantly, but you yeah. know, you got to manage the emotions. That's a big, big driver in success. Right. Right. Um, and if, and if you're, if you struggle with that, you know, it, it might make sense to seek out a professional who can guide you. Most of what we do is professional coaching and handholding uh, and, and, and we help people to just have peace of mind about it. And because when you retire, you don't really want to be worrying about that all the time. That's a huge energy suck. And we just, you know, you, you want to be able to do it and, and sleep at night. So, so. In, in summary, basically, there are things that you, there are mistakes that you don't want to make in retirement. A big one is to, to avoid having assets that grow faster than inflation and stocks have historically done that. So don't make that mistake yeah. in retirement. Yeah. Well, I hope this has been helpful. So thank you for listening. As always, uh, drop a question in the comments. Give us a like, subscribe, We, we might share. even answer it uh, in an episode. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We like to hear from everyone. So share with your friends, subscribe, uh, give us a like anywhere you listen to podcasts or watch YouTube. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.